little different. Nick was the first one out the hatch. being put into the station airlock in preparation for EVA. I'm already in head first, and there's Bob waving. He's uh, going to be put in second. I'm going to open the hatch today, and Bob's going to uh, operate the uh, control panel for the airlock. Our two uh, suit-up experts were TJ Creamer, seen here, and our commander, George Zamka, and they got us out the door in, uh, I think, record time for this mission, and in really great shape to do our last EVA. TJ and George just off the left of the screen putting the safer, that's the simplified aid for EVA, EVA rescue, on Bob's uh, backpack as close. And this is the little rocket pack that if you ever to drift free of station and your safety tether would be broken, would fly you back uh, to, uh, to so you grab onto the station and come home. Because if you were to drift away, there'd be nothing to, uh, uh, nothing to come get you. Station can't move around the sky the way shuttle can. on the left, on goes Safer, and the next thing will be Bob going feet first into the airlock. This is really, uh, in terms of EVA preparation, one of the easier times for the EV crew member because you don't have to do anything, you just hang on to a handrail and uh, somebody else does all the hard work as you can see. Sorry, he's reminding me that ends really soon. Once you're out of the airlock hatch, it's uh, all hard work. And in goes Bob. And you can see Bob's still on an umbilical so that we don't deplete our uh, oxygen tanks while we're waiting to go out the airlock. We wear an umbilical till the last moment to bring us oxygen straight from the station. TJ on the right there is an uh, Army helicopter pilot, very experienced helicopter pilot. And George, back in the distance in the blue shirt, is a Navy fighter pilot, uh, I'm sorry, a Marine fighter pilot. So, so a Marine fighter pilot, so uh, we are in very, very experienced hands as we get put in the airlock. Closing the inside hatch, and this is uh, not too long before we'll depress the airlock and open the outside hatch to begin the EVA. Oleg on the right in the Russian in the red shirt is a Russian cosmonaut here on the International Space Station. Jeff Williams, and he 
he was really kind of a bedrock for everything that we did. He's an expert on the station. He's very efficient. He's been really helping us get everything done. Kay is putting together a, uh, uh, one of our boxes. It's called an ATU. It's the communications box. And that those two hoses were water lines that are used to cool it. So that was a, one of our tasks today. Here's a view from the docking department. You can see the several robotic arms, the shell arm and the station arm. And there, on the cupola, you can see Nick Patrick doing his work. This is a, just a wonderful view that they have from the Russian module. It's called the docking compartment. And uh, you can see him doing work there. And Nick's loading up to take a look at this. He hasn't seen this yet. These launch locks were, were a lot of fun. There were 21 bolts. Um, they, uh, some of them were stiffer than expected, but uh, I think it took the best part of an hour to unpack them all out. And as soon as I did, the, the window shutters were visibly loosened. Um, the windows were opened a few minutes later. camera was, uh, as you can tell, it was pointed nader, and a lot of us uh, uh, either bumped into it or, or uh, didn't even know it was there, just because uh, one of the things with the cupola in its orientation is it's, uh, it's just, you, you, you've got to flip over in order to be heads up in the cupola, which can confuse you for a little bit. So here are views from inside the cupola looking out. these, uh, but uh, uh, just witnessed a spectacular uh, sunset from Cupola. And one thing that, that uh, unlike a flat window or a paned window, when you have a uh, hemispheric window, you don't have to have your face right up there. You can actually back up and, and uh, just take in the whole view. But uh, you can pretty much see the whole earth uh, out that window. We've got more coming. Uh, the conclusion of the EVA, and uh, we'll let this go for a while, but this, this is uh, Bob Benkin coming on in, and uh, you can tell that there is a massive bag. Uh, that front bag, I believe, was the, the MRI from the cupola that was uh, coming in. And Bob, of course, comes in head first, and uh, Nick was outside, and Nick was handing him more bags. So this is kind of like packing for a for a vacation, uh, you know, in a Volkswagen Beetle, you know, it's just very limited volume uh, to put your stuff in, and of course, uh, the, the spacewalker, we still have one spacewalker to go, and he is going to 
come in feet first. And so, uh, this was, uh, I was filming this, uh, and so it, it took a little while to, to get Nick up there, but just uh, his feet coming up there shortly, and then the two are, uh, they're, well, no, it's another bag. The two are in their kind of reverse uh, attitude, and uh, Nick's job today was to close the hatch. Without that, you can't repressurize the airlock and then come in. In fact, without that, they won't let you in because there will be a hole in the airlock, a really big hole. Uh, the hatch is hard because it swings into the airlock before you can lower it into the, what effectively is the airlock floor. And I think there you can just see uh, me coming in feet first through that hatch uh, opening. the hatch you have to close the, the thermal cover it's like a piece of MLI that, that uh, keeps the uh, keeps the temperature of the hatch itself under control all these things are actually quite difficult and this is the first spacewalk in which I operated the hatch on uh, spacewalks one and two that have been done by our easy one Bob Bank and whom you see right there through the uh, hatch window this time If uh, when you're Capcoming here and there's, there's folks up here, if you can't find them, I would I would look in the cupola because there's going to be a lot of folks enjoying time in there. That makes sense. We wish we were there too. That view right there, I had a chance to see Bob and Nick go in uh, right at the end of their EVA when they were clear. We opened up the window and had a chance to see them do their last ingress into the airlock. The airlock's just on the other side of those tanks sticking up. Terry, and I can't thank you enough for that. It is just awesome to get a chance to see that. Everyone here working in the control room and anyone watching on uh, NASA TV, I, I know is thrilled. And you know, for the team here especially, all the folks that put all that hard work in to, to get to see that video is just uh, just spectacular. So thanks so much. We look forward to getting the rest of it here in a couple minutes. Thanks, Mike. A lot of people worked really hard there in Houston and also in Italy who uh, were partners in building that module. So it's great to see it here. Sure, if they could, they would tell you prego, which means you're welcome. Grazie. Captain Mike Massimino there talking with the crew as they narrated some video they sent down. That was just the first installment of today's video. Uh, they're currently out of uh, coverage to send down more, but they should be getting the capability back in about eight minutes. So. I uh, look for, for more video to be sent down around 6.30 a.m. Central Time. And we're getting good video down here. Looks great. Excellent. Okay, I, I don't think that's, uh, there's too much narration other than it, it's uh, really neat to stick your head out and look at the station. Uh, you can see uh, the progress, the Soyuz, you can see it right in the payload bay of Endeavour. Uh, you can see both robotic arms, the truss. Uh, you, you really get a sense that there's a, uh, a whole big station around you, uh, which, is, which is really neat. into the window of uh, the docking compartment. Uh, now we tried 
to get some video of, of uh, somebody waving in there, but uh, uh, the sun just provided too much of a reflection. Here Terry's getting a good good shot of the uh, of the moon. Uh, looking out through the cupola that struck me right away is that you don't get a view like that anywhere else other than EVA. And in some ways, it can be even better, better less, restriction, uh, less restricting than being inside that helmet. For instance, in the EMU, you can't really look up at all, and you're quite restricted left and right also. And here's uh, 360 degrees around and up, and all squashed in with the rest of your crew. So there's... Uh, there's some elements that are like the EVA and some, some that are maybe even better. Steve, that sounds awesome. Unfortunately, we've lost the signal for the last little bit of it. If you can uh, hit pause and rewind a little bit. Mike, that was the end of our flight day highlights, and here is a okay. um, demo gave me a tape, and I just did a 360-degree tour, so... I think narration will just detract from creation there. I'll let you guys watch. Okay, we're getting a good uh, downlink again, thanks.